KFSR at CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger, a public affairs program featuring stories from all over the Central Valley with Sevag Tetiosian, 90.7 KFSR. Welcome to the Central Valley Ledger. I'm your host, Sevag Tatiosian. We're recording out of the beautiful downtown Fresno studios of the Community Media Access Collaborative Fresno Clovis. We're part two of a two-part series with Lieutenant Colonel Shepard with the Civil Air Patrol. Welcome, sir, to the program. Great to be back. Welcome back to the program, <laughs> I should say. I enjoyed our conversation the first time because you gave us a lot of insight on not just the Air Force, but flight and airplanes that I don't think people know about. Do you, when you're out there talking to people, do you know, uh, do a lot of people know about airplanes and, and the details that go into them? Well, generally, no, unless they have a specific interest in, in that. Um, occasionally, some youth who may be spending a lot of time on the Microsoft flight simulator <laughs> may have quite a bit of knowledge of, of, of the basics. But the average person, well, that's, that's not uh, part of their background. So they may not uh, know about flight or the military, and they certainly probably don't know about Civil Air Patrol. <laughs> Which is why it's great to have you here in, on the program, because when I learned about Civil Air Patrol, and I'm going to give Mary credit, who crews the Central Valley Ledger, she was telling me all about the Civil Air Patrol, and I was amazed because, I'm going to admit it, don't be mad at me, I had not heard about the Civil Air Patrol. So what is the Civil Air Patrol? Well, the Civil Air Patrol is an all-volunteer Air Force auxiliary. Just last year, we became uh, an official part of, of the total force, which was, consists of active duty, Air Force Reserve, Air National Guard, and Civil Air Patrol. So we have many missions which we perform for our country as volunteers. How did you get involved in Civil Air Patrol? Because you've been flying for a very long time. When was it that you kind of heard about this organization and you said, I want to be a part of it? I first learned about Civil Air Patrol when I was still flying for the 144th Fighter Interceptor Wing. And the, the, the unit, Civil Air Patrol unit, uh, met on the base and even kept their aircraft there. So it was sort of hard to ignore them to find out what they were going. And I had a son who joined as a cadet. And that was something that he wanted to do that I'd hoped that we could share together. And actually, after a while, he decided to do other things. And I stayed on. And I want to stop you right there. And I apologize again, because I'm going to stop you in the middle of this interview several times, because you're going to say something that is going to get me excited or, or raise a question. You said something very important that he decided to do something else. You've got people as young as 12 years old involved in Civil Air Patrol. Is this a good way for people to know if the Air Force or flying is for them? I cannot think of a better way um, because, it, you know, kids have all kinds of ideas about, you know, what's going to be cool, what they want to do in their, their life. And they don't always have the opportunity to check out those ideas. And it's important that they do that. And if they think aviation or if they think a military career might be something for them, Civil Air Patrol is a great way to kind of test those waters. And they may find out after a few months, fantastic, this is the way I'm, I'm, go I'm going all the way. You know, I'm going to aim for Air Force Academy. Or they may think after six months, what was I thinking? <laughs> I know I can't do this, you know? And what I always tell parents, either way, it's good knowledge to have for that young person because it's actually better for the military too. I mean, we want people who serve in the military who are excited about being there, you know, who want to do the best job they can do, not who are looking, oh my gosh, just two and a half more years until I can get out. Um, that doesn't serve the individual or that military organization well at all. And in CAP, 
I think they can largely discover whether that military culture works for them or not. What will students learn or members learn in the Civil Air Patrol? Wow, in the cadet program, <laughs> they learn so many things. As I mentioned before, it is a fantastic leadership program. And of course, we use the military model with that. And yes, they do learn how to march, but that is more of a vehicle for learning leadership. First to be a follower, then to be a leader, a flight sergeant, assistant commander, a squadron commander, maybe as I said later, maybe they can even be an encampment uh, commander and learning more and more uh, re responsibilities. So that's the one thing. But they're also learning about aviation, learning about history, learning about the, the, the STEM uh, subjects, science, technology, engineering, and, and math. We have a cyber patriot team this year. So they're learning how to do cybersecurity, which is a whole other huge area of, of growth, and it, and it needs to be both for companies as well as for our military because we, we are all subject to uh, people, whether stealing our identity or stealing our bank account or shutting down the whole power grid. We all have to be concerned with cybersecurity. So our cadets are learning how to do that way better than I know, that's for sure. Um, they learn not just about flying from books or videos. Every cadet gets five orientation flights, and there's a different syllabus for each flight, so they learn a bit more, a bit more, and they get the opportunity to actually fly the airplane, a, a real airplane, a Cessna 182, which our squadron uh, operates, and um, they don't get the chance to land that airplane, but we do also in our squadron have our own FAA certified flight simulator, and that they can land and take off <laughs> and, and practice the other things that for safety reasons, uh, we don't let them do uh, with the uh, real airplane. And beyond what we offer uh, locally, in the summer in, in particular, nationwide, there are dozens of opportunities uh, for cadets to do perhaps a, a base visit to uh, go to a search and rescue school, to go to a, a, a sailplane school. And by the time you're 14, you have the, the possibility of getting your license as a sailplane pilot. And something that's very exciting that's coming up as early as next summer is I expect we're gonna have hundreds of scholarships for young men and women who really wanna be pilots because the Air Force is now short on pilots. I'm going to stop you there. The Air Force is actually short on pilots. The Air Force is short on pilots because of the budget cuts we had a while back and the base closures that they had. And so, and, and then also because uh, airlines are hiring. So after pilots, they did their pilot training, they, they served for eight years, and now they're able to go out and start a civilian career and so the Air Force ends up short on pilots. And so we're part of the solution to remedy that by encouraging young people who have that interest to compete for these scholarships. And there will be a six week encampment where they'll have an opportunity to earn their private license in, in, in powered flight. And they, uh, you know, some of them may be getting an aircraft license before they get a driver's license. <laughs> That's remarkable to me because it is. It's a. It represents like a ten thousand dollars scholarship, and well. <laughs> and do you get parents encouraging their kids to join your program just to teach them manners or leadership skills? I mean, because it sounds like not every person who joins the Civil Air Patrol goes on to be in the military or even a pilot. No. For the average person who is on the fence and maybe is not leaning towards the military but wants to be involved for the Civil Air Patrol because of what you teach, is that a good reason for them to join? It is a, a great reason to, to check it out. There, as I said, there, there is no requirement to join, to join CVAP and then you must go to the military. It's nothing like that. It, is a great time to check out an interest. 
we, we ask the cadet joins that they do make a commitment to uh, attend and, and to work the program for at least a year because there's no contract that makes them do right, that. Right. But the thing is, like so many other things, you will only get out of the program, you know, it's proportional to what you put into the program. And if someone is willing to do that, I think they, they will clearly see the, the, the benefit of the program. And I, I personally love seeing sometimes these, maybe just a, a shy little girl who, you know, went through attendance, you can barely hear her name, and a year later, she's a flight sergeant, and she is barking <laughs> out of command voices orders, and 20 cadets are doing right face <laughs> on her orders. And that, wow, did that cadet learn anything about herself? So the other thing that the Civil Air Patrol does that I found very fascinating is where there is a crash or where there is some sort of search for, let's say, a, a plane that went down, do you all go up and actually help in the search? <laughs> we, we certainly do. We do about 90% of the search and rescue operations in, in the continental United States and also Alaska and Hawaii, but there are a other agencies. But we're, we're the largest one. Civil Air Patrol operates more than 500 uh, mostly Cessna aircraft, which are high wing aircraft and ideal for search. So the, the, the way it works is there are actually search and rescue satellites that will pick up emergency locator transmitter if it's going off after a crash. And after two passes, the, this information gets relayed to the AFRCC, the Air Force Rescue and Control Center, Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida, and they'll have an approximate location, and then say it's in California, then they will call California Wing, and they will put out the notice, you know, we need an air crew to uh, fly in, in, in this region to, and then, you know, some of the other details to, uh, to locate that aircraft. And if everything is working right with the equipment that we have on our aircraft, and some decent weather also helps too, uh, we'd probably be able to, to, to fly to those approximate locations, set, set up a fairly tight search pattern, and uh, we, we, we also have, have a de device that tracks that emergency locator transmitter, which is called ELT, that tracks it, and probably find that in 15 minutes, everything works the way it's supposed to. Um, this last rescue that I talked about last week, um, yeah, the weather was terrible and the, the ELT didn't last long at all. So that was much more difficult uh, to finally and find do that the, crash. Do the, do the cadets or the, do the members of Civil Air Patrol go up with you? I mean, what, tell us a little bit about who actually goes up to do the search. All right. For a search, we, we always go with the air crew. It's, it's never uh, a single pilot. The pilot's job is fly that airplane and do it safely. And then in, in the right seat, we have either a mission observer, which could be a, a trained air crew member who knows how to do a lot of the flying stuff, but not all of it, but knows how to operate the CAP radio and the Becker tracker and should know how to program the G1000. Uh, so he's an essential part of that crew. And then in the back of the aircraft, we have a, a, a trained scanner, again, another set of eyes, because um, f finding a, a crash is a lot trickier than most people would realize. For the most part, you're actually not looking for an aircraft anymore. You're looking for funny looking pieces that might be scattered all over the place. You may be looking for a burn in the forest where it went down, or really difficult, you may be looking for a lump in the snow or something, which yeah, that just doesn't fit there. Extremely difficult to uh, to find a crash. You know, if you if you get a snow after the crash, that's usually something that you'll find when you come back in the springtime. So, finding aircraft when everything works the way it's supposed to, um, not that hard. But it doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. <laughs> Can you tell us some success stories and how? the people that were searching, how excited they were when they saw? Or is, is that the proper word? When you find a crash, is it excitement? that? What's the feeling you get 
when you see the crash and find it and explain what was going on around you if you found a crash. Well, most of the time when you're finding a crash, if you're just looking at pieces, you're, you're looking at, a, at an impact situation and it's not about finding survivors anymore. It's about finding the crash and uh, you know, collecting remains, which is usually a, a sheriff or a sheriff's helicopter then comes in at, uh, at that time. But uh, just a couple years ago, there was uh, locally um, up, in the, up in the Sierra, a gentleman who had flown that route um, many times who had a, uh, think, a, a propeller uh, that came a, apart from him. And when, when, that, when that propeller is out of balance, the vibrations are so extreme, if you don't shut your engine down immediately, literally the engine will rip out of its mounts. And when that, once that happens, you can't even fly the plane as a glider. So he shut down his engine. He was approaching the Kearsarge Pass area, which is very high terrain. He was actually able to get it down relatively well, still broke, still broke his ankle and had, had some other uh, injuries. And like the, the, his ELT did work. The system that I just described to you uh, worked. And about 1 a.m. in the morning had a, a high bird that located the ELT, that got, got the coordinates on him, and first thing in the morning was able to bring in a park service helicopter, because I, I think it was in Kings Canyon, I shall park, and bring in and, and pick that gentleman up. And at our wing conference, several months after that, that gentleman came oh. and spoke. And well, um, there were more than a few tears yeah. in that, because uh, ultimately that's what we'd love to do. We wish that happened more at often. Every, yeah, at every, at every crash ultimately, site. But uh, that was, uh, that was r really great to see that, you know, that, that he came and to uh, know that he was, uh, you know, he was, he was literally in a very hurting situation. He was, he crashed. It was almost 11,000 feet. It was high up, up in the Sierra. Did that put a there. face, did, did that put a face in why you do what you do with this gentleman actually walking in? It, it, it certainly did. And actually, nation, nationwide, uh, Civil Air Patrol is credited with saving probably about 75 to 80 lives um, annually. We, you know, we certainly wish there were more, but that's, um, you know, we've got many, many more searches than that. Um, but there's not always survivor. That's, that's the sad side of it. Where are these planes parked and what kind of planes are they that the Civil Air Patrol uses? Well, almost all of our aircraft are Cessna, a Cessna 172s and, and 182s. We have a 182 Turbo which enables us to, as I said, to fly right up to um, 15,000 feet and still have the same horsepower as we'd have at, at sea level. So that's really useful around here when you have um, you know, Mount, Mount Whitney going up to 14,500 feet. You know, if someone <laughs> had the bad, bad sense to crash on Mount Whitney, we, we could at least be right up there on, on, on that search also. And <clears throat> California, wing has about, I think, 28 or 29 aircraft that are distributed around the state. So uh, our aircraft is right here at uh, Fresno uh, Air Terminal. And we've been operating out of here uh, for quite a few years. I think, uh, I believe our squadron was, was founded here like 1979. But you know, Civil Air Patrol is way older than 1979. And coming up on December 1st, we're going to be celebrating our 75th birthday. 75 years of this organization that's really changing lives. Yes. C Civil Air Patrol actually was founded one week before Pearl Harbor through some uh, very visionary people who uh, knew that the war was coming 
and we were incredibly unprepared. And in those first months of the war, um, within sight of our ports and our beaches, German submarines were sinking shipping. I mean, one and two ships per day. Wow. And so our first mission was to take this little bitty aircraft, like Piper Cubs, out over the water, as far as 60 miles out to sea, and try to find the submarines and try to radio Coast Guard and Navy destroyers to come in and take care of them. Well, we were spread so thin that a lot of times, you know, destroyer couldn't get there in time before the sub was diving and gone. So eventually, they actually put itty bitty bombs and depth charges on these little aircraft. And so, we had credit for damaging, I think we had credit for sinking two subs. How we did that with these little depth <laughs> charges, I'm not sure. I wasn't there a little bit before my time, but that was Civil Air Patrol's very first mission in the very desperate early months of World War II when Allied shipping was being decimated by the German subs. In Fresno, how many members or, or students is it, are in the Civil Air Patrol and does that number fluctuate? Well, it fluctuates uh, a, a, a bit, but we, ha we have uh, with both our, our senior members, which senior means adult, that doesn't mean you're over 65, <laughs> although I do happen to be, but just adult members and cadet members, we have uh, 63 in our squadron. But we definitely have uh, room to grow. And how do people contact you or how do they get involved? If we've got parents, we've got teachers, we've got nonprofit individuals and leaders listening to the program now and watching us, how do they get their kids involved or find out more information in this about this? Okay, we've got a great national website called GoCivilAirPatrol.com and there's a parent section and a youth section, a pilot section, there's a number of different sections where you go to and it'll give you information about the program. It also will tell you how to find a local squadron but I can give you a shortcut for that right now, and that we meet at 911 South Chance at the National Guard Armory at the fairgrounds, literally every Thursday night. I said literally, but yeah, don't <laughs> don't don't check us out on Thanksgiving, folks, because I don't think I think the gate will be locked, um, and everyone is free to join to come and 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 visit. We have. Um, uh, the cadet program, which starts about 6.15, and the, the senior program starts at 7. Is there a fee to join, and uh, how does that work? So I there, come there. There, 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 are, there are annual dues, national dues. We try to keep it very affordable for cadets after three visits, and we answer all their questions, and we may have a few questions for them also. I want to know the level of their interest, and if there might be, you know, appropriate to the, to the cadet squadron, um, they, can, they can do that online and the annual dues are $39. Wait, for the $39 annual dues? $39 annual dues. And now, of course, there, there may be uniform expenses, although we do have some uniforms we try to provide. And there's actually a $100 uniform scholarship that when they, they make their, their first level of achievement called the Curry Award, they get a hundred dollar scholarship, <laughs> so you know they're already actually making some money. Because um, and we we actually try very hard in, in our squadron to to keep the activities that we have for cadets uh, affordable. Um, Lieutenant Colonel, we're running out of time this week on the program, and you know I could easily do two or three shows with you. This is part two, and we still have a ton of things we could talk about, but. Why do you do what you do? I mean, when you came into the studio, you had energy. As I watch you now talking, you're passionate about this. I mean, it's not just something you're doing to check the box and go home, or you're not doing this for a resume. Here we are recording after hours in a downtown Fresno studio. And What is it that's got you saying, you know what, I'm gonna do this? Well, the search and rescue part of it. Actually, I, I didn't get to my stories, but I did spend three years in Air Force Rescue also. And the, um, there, 
the motto is that others may live. And uh, saving a life is uh, one of the very best feelings that, uh, that you can ever have. I was a lifeguard, and through the years, I saved a few lives. So, so there is that. But when it comes to the cadet program, like I said, when I was in high school, I knew zero <laughs> about Sailor Patrol. And I see the amazing program that's there and the opportunities that there. And the reason I'm talking with you here tonight is I want parents and I want youth to know about the opportunities that are available. You know, we get daily deluge with negative news. You know, that, that, that's the bias of the news media cycle. And yet, while we, I'm not denying we have huge challenges because we do, but we also have huge opportunities. And I'm talking about huge opportunities. Lieutenant Colonel, I'm gonna have to stop you there. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us about your background in the Civil Air Patrol program that's located in Fresno as well as nationally. We really appreciate the information. All right, thank you. That's all for this edition of the Central Valley Ledger. Our guest this week is Lieutenant Colonel Shepard with the Civil Air Patrol National Program, and they have a branch in Fresno, California. You check them out online. Thank you to the volunteer crew that made this production and every production possible. They're making us look and sound good in the studio and behind these cameras. Thank you to those watching this broadcast on the Community Media Access Collaborative Channel, Comcast 93 and AT&T 99, and to those listening to KFSR 90.7 FM. We hope that you enjoyed the program this week. We were recording out of the beautiful downtown Fresno studios of the Community Media Access Collaborative Fresno Clovis. Tune in next week to a new edition. KFSR and CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger every Sunday morning at 1130. For complete program schedule, visit KFSR.org.